Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Lindsay, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Laramie and I will be running today's webinar on CK12's CCSS Flexbooks. We are so glad that you guys have joined us for this webinar today. Before we get started with today's content, um, I want to make sure you guys are all comfortable with the Zoom webinar platform. You guys should see two different options on your Zoom screen, one that says Q&A and one that says chat. During today's presentation, whenever you have a question about CK12, please post it in the Q&A window. Um, that's where, that's the question queue we're gonna check. Um, we're gonna pause for a Q&A session after each major topic to address any questions that have been submitted to the Q&A window. Our hope for the chat window is that that'll be a place that you guys can, um, maybe if you're an educator, um, share your state or country, perhaps even your district or the subject that you teach. Um, just make sure that when you're chatting in the chat window, that you guys have selected all panelists and attendees, okay? Because a lot of times we get people who are sending general messages to the community, but by default, it only goes to all panelists. So unfortunately, only CK12 people can see it. So if you guys want to you know, share some information about yourself, please send it to all panelists and attendees so everybody can see it. Um, also, while we don't anticipate any technical issues during our broadcast today, if you are having any trouble with your video or your sound, um, let us know in either window and we'll try to help you troubleshoot that. Okay, so um, today's core content, today's session is called C CK12's CCSS Flexbooks. And during this webinar, we're gonna be, we're gonna be covering the following topics. Um, these books that we're talking to you about today have some added interactivity and clicks. Um, there are embedded interactives directly within the text of CK12 Flexbooks. So I'm gonna start by making sure you guys are comfortable with knowing what our interactivity and our clicks look like. And then getting to the meat of it, our Flexbooks. Uh, we're gonna talk about accessing and exploring Algebra 1 and 2, geometry, and middle school mathematics. And then we're also gonna talk about strategies for using these new interactive flexbooks, um, how you can incorporate them inside the class or outside of class time as well. So before we get started um, too much with today's content and the interactivity in these books, we wanna find out if any of you have explored our books so far and what you are looking for in a Common Core flexbook. So you're gonna see a poll here in just a few seconds. You should be seeing it on your screen right now. And we have two questions that we'd like you to respond to. Um, the first one is asking if you have ever explored any of CK12's Flexbooks with the embedded interactives. And there are three options there you can choose from. And then you'll note that the second question is a select all that apply. So you can choose any of these that you think apply to you. Um, and that's what are you looking for in a Common Core Flexbook? And so I'm gonna give you another 30 seconds or so to look over those answers and lock them in. Looks like the majority of you have responded. We'll wait another few seconds here for a few more people. Okay, I'm curious. Why don't we go ahead and end that poll and let's check out the results. Okay. Um, Actually, I'm, I'm quite impressed. It looks like a lot of you have seen, but you have not really explored the new Common Core books. Um, so that's, that's awesome. Um, we've got a couple people who've already used some of the book, and I'll bet you'll even find out more information today about that. And then um, a bunch of you have not even seen these books, so that, that's great. That's why we're here today to fully explore them. And then what you guys are looking for, uh, you want it all. You want interactivity, guided discovery examples, practice, um, and that's awesome. So we're, we're gonna cover how, we're gonna talk about how these books include all these new elements in it. 
So that's great. We'll go ahead and we'll close out of that poll. And let's talk first, um, before we go into a demo of these books, make sure you guys know some of the pieces that go into it, because this is, this is a new thing for these books. Um, in these new Common Core books, you're going to see some plicks that are included in a different way than our standard flex books. Um, so our PLIC stands for Play, Learn, Interact, and Explore. And they include descriptions and links to related reads, interactive frames and challenge questions, which build the higher level thinking and open discussion. Um, you can always view our PLICs through our PLICs browser. We have over 1,200 PLICs for math and science topics. So you can always go to ck12.org slash PLICs or Laramie's gonna show you in a minute some of our PLICs that are embedded inside of these books. And then in addition to links to the full PLICs within the text, you're gonna see some simple interactions as well including options to adjust content, to drag and drop answer choices, to explore graphs. So there's a few screenshots here that kind of preview what you're gonna be able to see in these books. But again, this is all new functionality special for these Common Core interactive books. And currently, if you're wondering, wondering where you can access them, you can access the published books um, in a couple of ways. First, you're gonna find the books under the related subject area, such as algebra or geometry, under the respective Flexbooks tab. You can also find them, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of any ck12.org page, you're gonna see in the footer that there's a link right there to the Common Core Math Books. And so clicking on that, that's kind of our, our special way of highlighting them at the moment, um, is the Common Core Math. Um, and then we also have a direct link as well, which is the ck12.org slash books slash standard slash CCSS if you would like a direct link. Any of those three ways should get you to the books that we're gonna be talking about today. And these new books were designed with the Common Core philosophy in mind. So not only are they correlated to content standards, but they include a combination of active learning, interactives, examples, and review. And that is where um, I'm actually gonna turn it over to my colleague, Laramie, who is the math guru and man in charge of these books. And he's gonna give you a tour and talk to you a little bit more about, um, about this, this philosophy and how these books are, are enhanced from our uh, previous editions. So it looks like you're on there, Laramie. I'm gonna mute myself and let you take over here. Sounds good, thanks, Lindsay. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, I don't know that guru is necessarily accurate, but I work a lot with math at CK12. Uh, and I've been a huge part of putting together these new uh, Common Core specific content for CK12. Um, as most of you, I'm sure, are familiar, uh, some of the big philosophical differences between the Common Core standards and previous sets of standards that we've worked with before include the idea that um, the Common Core expects a student to more deeply study fewer topics. So instead of such a broad uh, exploration of pretty much everything related to a given subject, there's a sort of a, a smaller number of topics and then we go more deeply into them. And in addition, the other thing we try to do is get the students to come to the understanding on their own for why they need to use a specific formula or learn a specific skill or uh, practice a specific uh, interaction. We want the students to, to come to that understanding for themselves instead of just being told, you know, here, here's a formula, memorize this. Those concepts, um, those philosophies have been very deeply built into the new Common Core books, in addition to following, you know, the, the Appendix A standard progression from the Common Core. Um, in addition to that, we also very closely followed that philosophy so that you're not just teaching them the content that the Common Core asks, but you're teaching it in the, in the way the Common Core expects you to be teaching that material. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here um, and give you a kind of a preview of what our new books are looking like. So if you go to, <coughs> pardon me, if you go directly to the CK12 homepage, uh, just ck12.org, uh, make sure in the top left hand corner, it actually says switch to student version because that means you're in the teacher version. Um, it doesn't make a huge difference, but otherwise some of the things we see may not look exactly the same. I'm going to show you, uh, kind of review real quick the two different ways, or the, the two primary ways to access these books. 
either you can go to right now, algebra or geometry, because the only live books we have are currently in those two subjects. So if you go to say algebra, click on flex books up here in the top in the tab, and then choose high school. You'll see partway down here on the right hand side, interactive algebra one for CCSS, and then there's also the teacher edition. Now I'm going to start this presentation by reviewing all of the student side, going through the student book, and then I'll come back a little later and uh, review the teacher's materials. So uh, keep, in, keep in mind that there will be quite a bit of material there specifically for the teachers, but I wanna kinda interact, kinda show off how the students interact with the book first. Uh, then the second way to find these two books is to go all the way to the bottom of pretty much any page on the site, and over here under by CK12, you'll see it says Common Core Math. Uh, whichever of those links you click on, you should see this particular page here that highlights our Common Core Flexbooks. Now currently you'll see that we have live the Algebra 1, the Geometry, and then the Teacher's Guides for both of those. I'm going to show you today some content also from a couple of our beta books, uh, which includes the Algebra 2, which um, you should be able to see, should be able to access directly on the site in beta form uh, within the next two weeks. Uh, and then the middle school math, uh, I would say we have a couple of the books that are closer to a beta stage. Uh, the other one is definitely an alpha stage, but I expect to have all three of those available for school this fall. Uh, and they will be accessible from the site in progressing uh, materials throughout the summer. So if you're looking at that or wanting to consider using that material, You'll have, begin to have access to it over the summer and it will be, it'll definitely be put together before fall. So let me, um, I'm gonna turn off my camera here. If it'll remind, let me know. I guess it'll just keep running the screen. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move forward into showing you some of these sample di different types of interactives. Uh, if you go to the Algebra 1 for CCSS book, chapter one, the first lesson is linear functions. And I'm just gonna scroll through real quick here. I'd like to take a look at what that lesson looks like. You'll see that there are lots of, um, there are a few examples and you'll see that as you get farther into the book, more and more of the content of the book is what we call active learning. That active learning is the idea that instead of just telling the student what they're going to learn and um, reviewing what the skills are supposed to be, we dive right into giving them questions to explore and we expect them to have trouble understanding some of the questions and as they move, move forward through each additional supplementary question, refers to something that they may have already worked on, something they may have stumbled on before, they may have understood before, but progressively introduces new material to them in that, in that very common core Socratic method. Um, here's our first interactive in this lesson. There's a Plix there that if we click on, takes us to a Plix page. Now those of you who've worked with CK12 before will recognize this, I'm sure. Uh, there'll be some kind of interactive over on the right, usually uh, involves moving around a red point. And then once the students kind of read the directions and understand what they're supposed to do, they can click on challenge me and go through a specific set of questions that are related to that Flix Interactive. Now in the new books where these are embedded, these are places that we consider that content to be um, appropriately supplementary to the lesson. These Plixes won't be written specifically for the lesson, but those are, those are Plixes that review content that is directly and immediately related. Now, if we scroll a little farther down through this lesson, I think, yeah, this one has one of our new embedded interactives also in it. Now, the embedded interactives are built specifically for that lesson. So you'll see, generally speaking, there'll be material just up above it that talks about why they're going to be getting into it. Um, and then it'll ask them to specifically use the interactive to answer a set of questions that's related to the lesson. Now, particular, in particular, this one allows them to adjust the slope of a line and see how it would affect a table of values and also how it would affect the graph line and also to adjust the y-intercept and again they can see how it adjusts the table of values also adjust the y-intercept and here are questions directly related to that interactive right in the lesson so that the students are learning along the way they have something that builds engagement for them as they're actually going through the lesson and this is just one of the new types of interactives let me show you a couple more here we have um, oops, that's, oops, sorry about that. Here is, I think this is, yeah, lesson 1.2 in the same book. Um, this one here starts off, talks about equations and tables. Um, again, we have a number of examples and then a number of the specific interactive learning, the active learning questions that we were talking about. And then this one shows one of the new videos. We have many new videos that have been specifically uh, composed for our new 
Common Core lessons. These specifically talk, talk about the content in the lesson instead of just being, uh, again, like before, related content. These are directly written for the lesson that they're supposed to be associated with. Um, so hopefully, the, again, build student engagement. This one has another uh, clicks embedded as well and uh, additional um, uh, inter or active learning and uh, clicks is down near the bottom of the lesson. Um, another type, let's see, oh, here we go. This one is in Algebra 1 Lesson 3.5, um, if you want to take a look at it personally. This, this particular example is one of our new uh, kind of replacements for a table interaction before. Uh, classically at CK12, we've had tables that were embedded in our lessons, but they kind of expected the student to either print out the table or duplicate it on a piece of paper to answer matching questions. Now we have the capability of taking questions that used to exist only in our practice tool and embed them directly in the lesson. So here they can play around a little bit with definitions of formulas. Um, in this one, they're, they're reviewing formulas from physics and geometry. And they can just drag the questions or the answers right down into the little boxes on the screen and get an immediate feedback that tells them whether they've got them put together right or wrong and they can try them as many times as they want. It's very much a, a formative assessment kind of an idea. Um, this one has a set of 12 different definitions and formulas they're supposed to learn, so they're set up in groups of three. And again, there's some more of that active learning that we discussed, and this particular lesson has a couple more interactives down near the bottom. Now, uh, here's some of our new beta content. In the Middle School Math 6 book, again, in production here, this is one of the new Math 6 lessons on long division. Um, you'll see this kind of has some uh, wall of text here where we don't have some of the new images in yet. That's why one of the reasons this is still in beta. But one of the neat things about this one is it gives us a view of our new widgets. Now these allow the student to uh, interactively work on this one as long division and gives them step-by-step -step examples of how to solve long division problems, telling them uh, specifically where they can type numbers in, how they type them in, uh, practice multiplying and carrying numbers and so forth. Uh, so they get as many questions as they want, um, continuing to regenerate, either uh, redo the question they've started or as soon as they go through one, it gives them the option to get a new question. They can try something different if they like. Larry, um, let me ask you a question yeah. real quick. Um, sure. We have a, a question from one of our users here of, can a teacher see the formative assessment practice questions embedded within lessons for the whole class of what, as the students are interacting with this, is there any uh, you know, relationship to what the teacher would see? In the widgets, no. These, these widgets are randomly generated each time that they come up. Now, as far as the um, plixes and these drag and drop questions, these will be the same for each student. Um, I, I'm talking a little out of turn here, but I'm gonna kind of give you a, a sneak peek ahead of time. Uh, CK12 is currently about neck deep in something we're calling a course arrangement that will allow you to assign all of this content to your class so that as they're working through these interactive, these uh, built-in questions, you'll get immediate feedback from each student regarding how they responded to them. But um, right now, the only parts of these lessons that you get direct feedback for each student on are the embedded clicks, um, the ones like, well, we clicked on it, it opened the other window, like the first lesson here. Um, give me an example like this one here. If you have an embedded clicks, you can assign these and get an immediate feedback for each student, or the practice that is uh, at the top right of any of the reads, that can be assigned directly to your students. And that's part of something I'll get into a little bit more in the teacher's guide as well. Um, those are the only two things that you'll be able to get immediate grade back on right now. You got a thumbs up from Glenn. Glenn said sweet. But, uh, <laughs> I, so hopefully that was an, an answer of what he was looking for of exciting features yet to come. I am definitely looking forward to that as uh, on my end of the, of the kind of spectrum here as well. We've been putting a lot of work into those new core structure. I think you guys are going to like it a lot. Hey, Larry, okay. I think your, your mic's doing something funny. I don't know if it's where your hand is at the moment. That or... probably was. I was, <laughs> I was Try late. to talk into it and not touch it. And I think that, that, that sounds better. <laughs> Quit it myself in the shoulder. Okay, hopefully that's what's going on. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. Uh, Couple more of the widget uh, interactives we have. These, this one is uh, decimal addition, decimal subtraction. Again, step-by-step -step walkthrough shows the students exactly what to type in where. Um, as they get 
numbers right, you know, we have two plus one is three, it turns green and moves on, gives them a little immediate feedback. Two plus four is six, uh, we'll say nine and three is seven. Oh look, whoops, try again, gives them immediate feedback for each of the responses they put in so that they have kind of a building interactivity along the way. So these, these widgets are, are a neat tool. We have some of these embedded in a few of our older books, um, but this is the first time that they've actually been uh, consistently a part of one of our offerings. Uh, let's see what other options we have. Oh, uh, one of our new tables. Uh, as I mentioned, this interactivity back here, um, this was one of our new ways of handling table functionality. Another new way here, <coughs> pardon me, is uh, interactive tables that have immediate feedback for the students. So if they find one of these, they click on try it. It'll open up um, the table here and it says, someone was trying to complete this table but left some wrong answers and blank spaces. You're supposed to enter the correct values in the red cells to complete the table. So in this case, they're building a table of values for uh, two to the x. So the input value x, then they do the calculation y to whatever that value is, and then the output is y. So in this case, if x is negative two, if we have two to the power of negative two, that's gonna be the same as one over four. So since the one sixth was incorrect, if I type in one fourth instead, that cell immediately turns green. The student is shown the calculation that they were you know, referring to there, and they can move on. Now, they can either look in this one and recognize that one half then would be uh, two to the power of negative one, or they can see the progression of values for x over here on the left, in either case showing that this should be negative one. And as soon as it goes in, that cell turns green, the center is filled out for them showing the calculation, and they can move on to the next one. So now we have zero, <clears throat> and we have uh, one, and we have two, three. And then as we move on to the right, we can see two to the one, of course, is two, two squared is four, and two cubed is eight. And once they're all filled in correctly, you get a nice little green sticker down here on the bottom saying you correctly completed the table and allows them to, again, more of the, the formative assessment um, allows them to kind of build along the way and understand how the table goes together without having to print anything out or write anything on paper. And Laramie, over in the chat window, Shannon just said that she likes the error analysis aspect to this. Yes. Um, which, yes. again, is I think tying into that philosophy of what we're trying to do with these books. I think that the built, the, the different kinds of interactives here and the fact that they all tend to build on each other like this, I definitely agree. I think that's, this was really kind of, kind of the right way for us to introduce some of our new interactive personnel uh, uh, capabilities, I think. Some of these we've been building on for a while, but since the Common Core requires so much of the student to be a part of the learning process, I think this is definitely uh, kind, of a, kind of a neat way for all these things to come together and show us how to make, make the best use of them. So uh, let's see what else. So here's another one of our, uh, our more advanced tables. This particular one, uh, this particular lesson here is in Algebra 2. This is another one of our beta books here. Um, and this shows another way to handle an interactive table. Now, whereas the last one had the immediate feedback, um, because this one is a little bit more of an advanced lesson, it requires a little more of the student. They're supposed to, again, have the input values. Uh, they're figuring f of x, which is x squared up here, you can see as part of the lesson. And then they're finding the inverse of that function, which of course is square root of x. So if x goes in, uh, four squared would be 16, um, and then square root of four is two, you're seeing it doesn't give you an immediate right or wrong. Uh, seven squared is 49, square root of seven, and then of course the square root of x is three, then x is nine, and x squared is 81. And then once I get them all in, um, of course in this case, I'll hopefully at least get them all right. I'm gonna give one wrong, just to show this example. When you click check it, it shows you which ones are right and which ones are wrong. So you can go back and try again to fill the values and until you get the table built correctly. So again, this one is expected expecting a little more of the student along the way, but uh, is another way to, to handle that, that uh, building understanding. And then uh, just as a final kind of review or uh, introduction here, I wanna show you guys a couple of our more advanced uh, applications. Here's one, uh, graphs of logs, logs is the inverse exponential functions, um, allows the student to play with the values and see how it affects the graph of something. Um, we have another one down here. They actually have a little bit more capability as far as adjusting different factors of the equations. And it has an immediate feedback on how that affects the graph. 
of the functions. So every lesson in the book, um, with very, very few exceptions, if it's one of our new CCSS, interactive CCSS books, uh, virtually every, every lesson will have at least uh, two or three clicks um, or interactives, uh, embedded interactives like this, interactive tables, videos. Uh, to my knowledge, there isn't a single lesson in any one of the books that we're building that doesn't have some sort of direct interactivity. So we're, we're kind of excited about them. I'm, I'm hoping you guys are, are looking forward to it as much as I am, but uh, I definitely am looking forward to seeing what people think of them and how the new usage of them builds and how we can make them better as time goes on. So that's all I have for the student side here. I'm going to turn this back over to, to Lindsay. Well, keep, keep your screen on if you don't mind for a second, um, and we'll, we'll tackle a few of these questions. Yeah, we're, we're going to show off our teacher guides here in a second and show you what those look like. But um, a few questions we have here, Laramie, a couple of these are about the timeline again of um, what is the approximate timeline for the Intro to Algebra 2 update? So the Algebra 2 book um, will be released in beta uh, the commitment is to have it released in beta by the end of this month. So within the next couple of weeks, um, you should have it on that same page. It'll just have a beta sticker. Okay. And then are you thinking about doing Flexbooks for elementary school? <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. I'm not supposed to talk about these kinds of things now. Yes, <laughs> yes we are. Um, it's, it's not something I'm going to commit to. I can't commit to at this point, but it is very much... Uh, uh, it has come up in many discussions recently. Our goal is to get all of the middle school and high school done, but then the next potential big project is the, is the elementary, yes. Okay, um, and then a question about modifying these books. Of course, our flex books are customizable. So the question is, is are these books gonna be um, able to be modified the same way that users do with our other flex books? Yes, absolutely. Um, there are, of course, if you modify them and the teacher's guide won't fit, Quite as well you have to modify your teacher's guide as well but you certainly can um, some of the interactivity you'll have to kind of take part and parcel either getting rid of it or using it as it is because the interactives aren't uh, specifically uh, customizable yet although again that's also something particularly available in the future or potentially available in the future but yes the books are definitely uh, customizable just like any of our other flex books the only difference is they have more interactive interactivity built in and in case we have users who are on here and you and you and you had never seen the modification process of our Flexbooks, we do run webinars and we have some trainings available on our site that show you how to start that process of, you know, rearranging a table of contents and deleting content and adding content. So that's not really in the scope of this webinar, but, you know, definitely check that out if you're excited about these books and didn't know that you could customize them. Um, we do have resources available for you to see that. Um, how about uh, we've got a question about a more specific beta release date for middle school math. Now, I'd be happy to tell you if I thought I could, but I'd be afraid I'd just give you something that wasn't useful to you. Um, they are in active, they're under active construction right now. Um, chapter one for middle school math seven, all the text is done. Uh, many of the interactives are already built. Uh, the, the primary structure for middle school math six is done. Uh, but the overall content is probably about 70%. So they are definitely in process, but uh, I can't give you a better, you know, better description than you should, you should have access to them at least in beta form over the summer. Okay. Um, um, a couple other questions maybe uh, I can take here. We've got one I'm asking, has there been a study that compares results um, of scholars who work through pencil and paper versus those who spend more time working on a computer? Um, I'm sure there has been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I can speak um, to that colloquially. I can tell you that as a teacher before I started at CK12, um, I definitely found that because my students, uh, and as time goes on, it got to be more and more that way, because my students were becoming more and more digital native, uh, it seemed more like what they were expecting to do to work on things either on the computer or on their phones. And uh, we tried very hard at CK12 to make sure that anything we offer is accessible by computer, tablet, or phone um, to, to the extent uh, at all possible. So I, I can say something from my own experience th that the students were much more comfortable with that and kind of built from there so that the understanding didn't have that immediate wall going in. Uh, yeah, and if anybody else has an opinion, again, that's a great place in the, the chat window to chime in. I'm a former English teacher, so um, I, have, I have opinions on that subject of screen time, but uh, you math folks, I'm going to let you debate the, the, the math digital piece to it. <laughs> um, 
another question about um, if you are somebody who's excited about CK12 and wanting to present to your staff, um, we definitely have presentations available um, that we could share with you. Probably the best way to handle that would be to email um, jumpstart at ck12.org. Let me type that into the chat window real quick. Um, if you, if you, at the end of this webinar, if you have any unanswered questions um, or again, are wanting additional resources, if you wanna send it to jumpstart at ck12.org, um, we can share some information with you. Um, and then the last was somebody who just jumped in here of, uh, is the Algebra 1 CCSS interactive book available now? Yes. yes. Yes, it is. You can go to the bottom of any, pretty much any page at the CK12 website and click on the CCSS content under by CK12. Okay, and I'm gonna take one more here and then you guys keep adding questions and that's awesome, um, but we're gonna move on to the next section here in a second. Um, but the question is, is this primarily used at public schools, independent schools, or home schools? And gosh, I can tell you it is a big blend of all of that all around the world, actually. Um, on our site, in the footer, there's a, there's a link to what's called the usage map, or you can also go to ck12.org schools to get a sense of um, who's using us kind of around the world. But um, I do a lot of outreach and um, visiting all sorts of schools. So um, people come to us for various reasons to, to, you know, they have different problems they're trying to solve and we're, we're a fit as a whole curriculum or as a textbook or as a, as a resource, but it's, it's really being used in, in all of the different schools. Um, and if you want to talk to us about any specific use cases other than that, please follow up with another question. Um, but otherwise, let me steal the screen back here and I'm going to set you up, Laramie, to talk about um, the teacher books and uh, some of the strategies and using them. So let me share my screen. We just did a little bit of a demo and some Q&A. And so now that you've, you know, you're, you're getting a sense of what's in these books, um, hopefully you're starting to think about different resources and strategies for using them in your class. Um, with each of these books, this is another, you know, slight departure from some of our other books on the site, that for each of our CCSS interactive books, we've included teacher's guides to help you using these resources. And they include pacing guides, vocabulary, lesson objectives, standards, and other resources. And Laramie's gonna show you that in just a second. Um, and just to you know, get you thinking a little bit, of, of course, these books can be used inside of class as well as outside of class. Um, we think they're great for an independent learner um, you know, looking for self-exploration of a topic. Um, within a class, you know, students can turn to each other and they can interact with the neighbor and compare results. Um, you as a teacher can use an active learning problem as a warm up or introduction to a topic. Um, with assignments, these can be used uh, as homework. You, you can assign one of these lesson sections or you can assign the matching practice. Um, students, you know, students can build their own GeoGebra interactive to include in your customized flexbook. That's kind of stepping it up a notch here. Um, there is a highlighting and note-taking feature that you may have seen when, when Laramie was clicking on different text and, and, and highlighting it with his, with his mouse. Um, you may have seen our highlighting and note-taking feature pop up. And then, of course, like we, we think CK12 is ideal for differentiating within a classroom. You can use a mix of examples um, and active learning to help students explore at their own pace, at their own level. Um, so I, I think we're ready, Laramie. Why don't you steal the screen back and show off our teacher guides? All right, let me grab a hold here. Teacher guide, hopefully that one. Yes, got it right. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go back and start from kind of the, the home page for the teacher's guides here. This again, if you go to the bottom of any page on uh, CK12, under by CK12, you have that Common Core Math link, uh, brings you up to the dedicated Common Core page. And then the teacher's guides are down here on the bottom. Now, these teacher guides were written by a teacher um, and also by a, a curriculum developer working in tandem, trying to build a set of tools that make your life as easy as possible as a teacher. Um, I think you'll find that these are pretty in depth. Uh, if you go to, uh, for example, we're gonna take a look at the Algebra One teacher's guide. 
this is the home page for that. Now, the first thing I'm going to point out here is that the, the order seems a little odd. Um, you'll see that it has individual pacing guides for each chapter before it has the overall book pacing guide. Now, that's because uh, we built these on the CK Tool platform. It does all its own automatic numbering, and we wanted to make sure that the number for the pacing guide matched the chapter numbers. The first chapter is chapter one and so forth. Um, what I want to show you first here with our teaching guide, though, is in that overall book uh, book. Uh, information there. So this is the scope and sequence for the entire CCSS Algebra 1 book. Uh, this gives you, you know, kind of an overview of the actual lesson in general, tells you that it's supposed to be 180 day, two semester school year, um, talks about the different kinds of resources, the different kinds of uh, modalities that are included in one of our courses, gives you a quick overview of the types of interactives, um, gives you some uh, understanding for the kind of an overall view of how to teach from the text, the kinds of uh, practice questions that are uh, included in the text, uh, and kinds of examples and how they might be used. Uh, mentions the RWAs, the real world activities and the Plix interactives. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, these are kind of considered to be supplementary material. They aren't necessarily part of the lesson, but they're, they're there so that you can expand upon the material as necessary. And then you'll see that there's actually a scope and sequence for the entire course here, giving you a feel for how much time should be dedicated to each individual chapter. Uh, so here, chapter one is expected to be a total of 22 instructional periods. That includes a chapter assessment and some quizzes, and then all the actual lesson material uh, and so forth on down through the different lessons here, or different chapters here. There is a semester project, a midterm project, that's two periods of its own, and um, a, a final assessment here for uh, another five instructional periods that gives you a few days to prep for it. Now uh, there is a midterm and final project suggestions here so that if you don't want to use a test there are actual suggestions for uh, projects you can use instead and I'm going to show you that a little more detail in the geometry where that's uh, a little bit more a part of the actual lesson. Now if we look at one of the individual chapter scope and sequences, sorry let me go back to the book here. So if we're going to take a look at the pacing guide for chapter one for instance now you'll see that there's individual information for every lesson in chapter one. Um, we looked at this linear functions one. This was the first uh, uh, lesson we looked at in a sample. Let me re remind you of that here. This was the student page for linear functions. So you'll see the teacher's guide that goes along with it tells you what standards that covers, the vocabulary that uh, you can introduce to your students, the learning outcomes for that lesson, the things that the students should be able to do, and then gives you a quick overview of the mathematical practices that were specifically in focus for that lesson. In addition, it gives you a walkthrough for each instructional period. So you can build this out as two different periods, gives you a suggestion for how long each part of the lesson is expected to take, and there are links directly embedded in here for the plixes that are included in the lesson, and sometimes for additional plixes that we think might be good supplementary material. And also, there's a link here for the homework that you can assign as a teacher. You can, uh, for instance, open this, take a look at it here. This gives you an example of what those questions will look like, so you can decide if that's something you want to do. And you can assign those using, as one of our uh, teachers mentioned here just a minute ago, you can assign those using Google Classroom very easily. And then finally, there is a review, supplemental exercises that are only accessible through the teacher's guide. Students can't see these unless they're First, sign in as a teacher. Second, go to the teacher's guide. And third, scroll clear through the, uh, <laughs> the uh, scope and sequence for each of the lessons. So they're pretty well hidden. Uh, but if you click on these, you'll see that there are uh, additional questions that you can use for your students, either formative or summative, to try and give them a little more practice for the kinds of things that are covered in each individual lesson. And there's also the answer key, the solutions for the supplemental ex exercises and also for the active learning questions that are included in that lesson. Uh, so for the active learning questions that don't have uh, sort of a, an immediate answer in the text, you can see as a teacher what kinds of things the students are supposed to get out of it. Um, oops. Wrong. Where did I jump? I lost myself here. One second, let me jump back to that page. I apologize, I closed the page I needed. Okay, what did I do? Oh, I see what I did, I <laughs> one on the student edition. <laughs> I apologize, wow, I just got totally lost. Confused, my, confused myself completely. Okay, 
So if we go now to each chapter, in addition to the individual lesson pacing guides, there's also kind of like on the book overall, there's a chapter overall. And that chapter overall scope and sequence gives you kind of like a calendar for each chapter. You'll see here that these are the different lessons in chapter one over here on the left. And these are links directly to those lessons so that you can get a review as a teacher of what's taught there. These are links to the standards that are addressed in each of those, chap each of those lessons, any plixes that might be associated, the adaptive practice or the quizzes that you can assign to your students, the supplemental exercises and the solutions. So it gives you kind of a, a by chapter cheat sheet for all the links that you might need as an instructor. And then again, it gives you a quick overview of how long each of those lessons are expected to take. Now this, um, I was debating whether I should bring this up, but I think it's pretty neat. Uh, we were talking about some of the new functionality that's going to be coming uh, with our course structure. This is something that we're expecting you to be able to see in a calendar format again by this fall as a part of our new course structure that's going to be coming out where this information will be available in what looks kind of like a Google calendar that shows the dates and times of uh, each of the months of your year and then you'll be able to assign this course to your students and then drag to extend or uh, com compress any of these lesson periods on the actual calendar so you can get a feel for how much of your month is going to uh, chapter one how much is going to chapter two and so forth but that I think is going to be pretty neat. in the meantime you have your overall view here and then at the end of the uh, section down here you'll see where it has the chapter assessment again this is the only link to that chapter assessment so that the students aren't going to find it conveniently and you can use it as a summative instead of just a formative assessment um, and then the last thing i wanted to show you was the geometry version of this here's the geometry teacher's guide formatted very similarly here's all the individual chapter pacing guides the overall book teach, uh, pacing guide down here that also has the solutions links in it. And then here's a link to the midterm and final projects. Now, in geometry, those midterm and final projects are fairly huge. They, <laughs> they have a lot of dedicated content for you as a teacher, uh, information directly for the students and information for you to teach from. There are handouts that are printable as a part of it. There are dedicated interactives for the students that help them uh, work through the assignments that are part of that project. So you're welcome to certainly use a midterm or final exam if you would prefer, but uh, the midterm and final project are also included there and they're not included anywhere specifically in the student version of the text. So you are the only one that has access to those. Um, I think that pretty much does it. So uh, from a teacher standpoint, I would say that the first thing to do would be to go take a quick look at the student book, see if it's the kind of information you want to work with, and then go take a look through the teacher's guide starting with the last link in each of those books so that you can get the overall view of both courses and see if that's something that makes sense to you. Laramie, one question about um, the scope and sequence you were just talking about. One user is asking, um, how long is each period of class? Like, did you create that? Okay, so that's based on a on a 15 minute class period. Yeah, class five period. zero. Yeah. And then again, some of those are built specifically so that they're expected to take two or three class periods. Um, many of the individual lessons are actually set up so that you have the option to extend it to more than one class period so that, you know, if you have time off for, you know, in Colorado, it would be snow days. <laughs> in California, I'm not sure what it would be. <laughs> but uh, here, if we need to extend or compress uh, lessons, and many of them you have the option to, to make them take one or two class periods, and in some cases, three or four. Okay, and is there, you were just showing geometry, is there a midterm and final project for algebra? There are suggestions for midterm and final projects for algebra. They are not built into the text. Um, there are many, many, many great resources for those online, and there are some that we actually vetted and there are suggestions for those there. There are for the algebra midterm and final uh, exams, uh, you know, standard question-based exams. They're just not projects like they are in geometry. Okay, um, I'm gonna go back to a keynote presentation here real quick and kind of give you guys some wrap-up information and a few additional resources that I think would be helpful. Um, this is also the time where I want you guys to think of what additional questions you have um, for Laramie, what you would like to, to see him demonstrate, um, what we can clarify for you. So um, I'm going to steal the screen back, Laramie. I'm going to let you monitor the Q&A and kind of get a sense of what people are asking. And then in a couple minutes, it'll be back to you and answering those questions. Okay, sounds good. So I'm going to share my screen. 
And we just did some demo and Q&A. Um, so let's talk um, about this tools and apps page here. Um, ck12.org slash tools and apps. Um, this is going to be a page that might be helpful for you. Um, it's, it's a reminder to you that we do have a practice app and a physics simulations app, um, as well as an offline reader. So with our Flexbooks, um, you're able to download them with Wi-Fi connection and then access them offline. Uh, maybe a question for Laramie would be, I would think a logical question is, is well, what happens with these books with all of the interactivity if you're using it offline? So Laramie, add that to like one of the first things you're gonna answer is what, what these books look like if you're using offline access. Um, but you can, you can um, view our tools and apps page to get an idea there. Um, as referenced earlier, we, we have a new, uh, a more robust um, integration with Google specifically, um, but we do integrate with Schoology and Edmodo and Canvas. Um, we run webinars occasionally on that or using our help resources. Um, you can get more information about how to um, use these learning management systems to its full potential with CK12. Um, this is a page that I really like of it's it's ck12.org slash overview or ck12 resources in the footer. Um, but we've been talking a lot about Flexbooks and you've seen some of our Plix interactives. Um, you've seen a little bit of our adaptive practice, but if you wanted to learn more about all of the resources we have on CK12, this is a great landing page. Um, those plus signs expand and you can see all of our offerings and then you can also watch, you know, a minute and a half, two minutes of teachers and students who have been using these tools in their situations. There are public schools, private schools, home schools, everything we were talking about earlier. Um, CK12.org slash overview. And then um, our CK12 Cafe is um, a great way to continue this conversation. Um, it's a place where you can network with other CK12 users and then also get support from our staff. Um, from the homepage, you can click on Cafe to see our forms that we have for both students and educators. This Jumpstart for Educators form is the one that you might want to join and you can keep checking back as we add more state specific forms. Um, we're, we're excited that you guys were here today. We do run um, several webinars a month. And so the next ones that we have coming up, we have one that's on groups and practice 101. So if you wanted to learn more about our adaptive practice system and um, how you can assign some of our modalities through groups, um, what student reports look like. Uh, if you need more information on those topics, groups and practice 101 is a, is a great place to do that. And then CK12 for math and science teachers is, is really trying to, to say how, what are some of these strategies? What are some of the innovative ways we see educators using CK12? Um, a few more practical strategies for how you can um, use, our, use our resources in ways that maybe you hadn't considered before. So you can always register at ck12.org slash webinars. Um, also, we're getting excited of last summer, we ran our first certified educator program. And this July, we're running our uh, the second annual Certified Educator Program. And so our basic registration page is live right now. You can go to ck12.org slash certified, or it's in the footer of our ck12.org um, page. And you can read a little bit about our program. You can see some of the alumni who have participated before. And then we have a register for more information. And our signups um, with actual dates and times are gonna go live here in I'd say the next month or so. But our program's gonna be in July. And we've got some flexibility of when you can take some courses and um, we're hoping to certify a lot more educators this year. Um, then as always, every webinar we do, we would love to get some feedback from you so we can continue to improve and know what worked for you and what didn't. This is a tiny URL, um, CK12 webinar 17. Um, if you have a couple of minutes, if you could click on that and give us a little bit of feedback, it's just a few short questions that let us know um, how we can improve for next time. And um, that's about it for my portion of it. So um, support at ck12.org. Uh, we've got a great support team if you need um, any help with technical issues. Uh, we've got, we're on the socials if you want to follow us at CK12 Foundation. And um, yeah, that's it for our core programming today. So if some of you guys need to head off, you're welcome to, but I think I'm going to kick it back over to Laramie and we're going to tackle any questions that you guys continue to ask in the Q&A.
So all yours, Laramie. Okay. So I'm going to take a look at some of the questions over here. The first one, uh, someone wants to know if, uh, uh, Glenn here wants to know if the summative assessment is editable and if the practice question banks are also editable. Yes, those are both uh, definitely customizable, just like anything else um, at CK12 in our practice tool. Let me share my screen here real quick. Yeah, yeah, even the printed summative assessments are actually editable um, because they're actually CK12 reads. Um, so I have my, my cheat sheet over here on the right reminding me in my ear that there are things that I need to, need to speak about. So yes, that's absolutely correct. Um, like any of our other content on CK12, if you go to your library, um, once you've assigned something or added it to your library using just right click and add to library, then you can either click on it directly and customize it, or you can create your own quizzes using this link over here. So yes, the content is all customizable for your purpose as teachers. Um, second question, would you like, uh, want to look at one of the project pages for geometry? Sure. Um, in the interactive geometry flexbook teacher's guide, um, again, go down to the bottom of any page, for those of you that weren't here before, uh, by CK12, Common Core Math. Teacher's guides are the bottom two books. Student guides are the top two. So if we go to the CK12 Geometry Teacher's Guide here, you'll see it has midterm and final projects as sort of their own chapters in the teacher's guide. Uh, the midterm project is Islamic tiling, and you'll see that there are uh, descriptions of, oh, I'm sorry, descriptions of each of the different parts of the project, um, the handouts for the students, teacher's guides for how to work with each of the lessons. And then just like the other sections of the teacher's guide, there's kind of an overview. That first link in here is the overview of what the different parts are, um, links to all the different sections that you might need, the printable student handouts. So yeah, if you want to take a look at what's included with that, that's where I would go. Um, the final project here is uh, architecture, um, architectural design. And again, using many of the tools that they learned in geometry, they're applying those to building a specific type of uh, floor plan and uh, meeting specific needs that are, uh, again, very valid for the, for the, the actual purpose of designing a room uh, as an architect. Was there anything else with that? that no? Okay. Oh, yes. And there will be customized uh, interactives for those projects. In fact, many of them are already built. They have not been put into the book yet, but as you can uh, continue moving on through the book, you'll see that there are many of the, like for instance, the Islamic tiling project, the midterm project, there are already built interactives that help the students see how to draw the specific shapes that they need to build uh, accurately to put together the tiling project. So uh, definitely I would take a look at those. Um, Demonstrate any of the adaptive learning features in the Flexbook. Sure. Um, the adaptive practice at CK12 uh, is built so that students are continually challenged with additional difficulty as they show that they understand any kind of material. So if you go to any one of the reads, uh, just like any of the existing reads for CK12, you'll see that the practice button is on the top right. Um, and in the teacher's guide, there are specific links to the adaptive practice for each lesson. Some of the links in the teacher's guide are actually uh, sort of consolidated practice where they're built from more than one resource in the original CK12 library. But uh, for any of the books, the lessons in the actual CCSS book, that practice button is just like they are in any of our other lessons in the top right where you can assign it to students. And that is adaptive. If the students do really well, they get more difficult questions. If they are having a little more trouble, they get uh, easier questions. And then as they're moved through it, if they are looking like they're being particularly challenged, it actually pops up and offers them suggestions for what they can do to improve their understanding. Um, when the early screen showed several different books. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, Shannon wants to know if there are books available for other subjects. Um, again, right now, the only two live books are the Algebra 1 and Geometry. The Algebra 2 is in beta. Uh, we're expecting it to be added to this page with sort of a little beta badge uh, yet this month, before the end of this month. 
Um, I'm hoping that it'll actually be in the next week, but I'm not going to promise that. <laughs> and then we are actively working on the middle school, uh, six, seven, and eight. Uh, I expect those to be available in beta form over the summer and be uh, definitely ready for full introduction for the fall classroom if anybody that wants to use them. But as a teacher, you'll be able to see the content and prep for the content over the summer because the, the core material will be there. Uh, Glenn wants to know if he starts using a beta version of Algebra 2 or Algebra 1 uh, when they switch over to general release, what happens to the edited uh, materials? So the the beta books will continue to be updated over time. Any lesson, if you, for instance, add the book to your library, uh, but don't change any of the content of any of the lessons in the book, then those will continue to be updated for you. Any lessons that you go in then and customize personally and actually change the text of one of the lessons, those lessons will no longer be updated based on the source material being updated. Uh, that's a core, uh, way of the uh, building of CK12's platform. So anything that you haven't personally customized will continue to be updated as we update it. Um, um, last question here, do we recommend this for any type of special ed? Um, as a teacher, I worked uh, for quite some time in a small private school where we had a, a kind of above average um, uh, attendance by students that have some kind of learning disabilities in many cases on the Asperger spectrum. Um, I found that CK-12's materials, because they had the interactivity and allowed the students to, to uh, kind of get in and work with things instead of just reading something out of, out of a book, and because they had the ability to zoom in, they can make text larger or smaller, I found these things to be very useful as a teacher there, but that's just colloquially. I don't know if there's any specific studies as far as that goes. That's all the questions I have on here. Uh, if anybody else has anything else they'd like me to demo while I'm still here, you have a few minutes. Uh, if anything else you'd like me to answer really quick, again, I'll be here for the next couple of minutes. But otherwise, thank you very much for attending today. And I hope, uh, I hope these things are accepted the way I expect them to be. There's a lot to see here. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so last call for any questions. We did cover a lot. You did a good job, Laramie. That's that's awesome. We that, that was a lot of, that was a lot, of that was a lot of that was a lot of content. Hopefully, everybody is exploring on their own and checking it out because I think that's what it's going to take to to digest everything you discussed. Okay. Well, since we have nothing else in the Q and A, we're going to go ahead and sign off. And um, let's see. Thanks. I've been using geometry with Schoology. Works well. Awesome. Happy to hear that. Um, okay, we're going to go ahead and sign off and we hope to see you all on a future webinar. Thanks. Thank so much. you everyone. Have a great Bye. evening.